Hey guys, it's Bad Media Karma. Today I'm going to show you how to beat the impossible CPU on 51 Clubhouse Games Hex. In 51 Clubhouse Games Hex, first player does not have to swap with second player. This is a pretty significant advantage for first player and why you should always try to play as first player whenever you're trying to beat the CPU in Hex. In a traditional game of Hex, second player would have the option of choosing to play as first player, i.e take their position. This would prevent first player from playing somewhere that's too advantageous should they end up becoming second player. Because this is not the case in 51 clubhouse games, I can go in the center, the most advantageous spot, without fear of second player stealing my spot. When you're playing against the CPU in Hex, typically they're going to go either to the left or to the right adjacent to you. Because of this, I can continue in a diagonal line because I am first player going in the center and continue to make my path. At some point, the CPU recognizes that they're going to lose if they continue to play like this. And so they play a little further out, effectively blocking me from being able to make my move. Now, if I go here to try to secure the right hand side, the CPU can simply go here, blocking off my piece. If I go here, the CPU can go here, blocking me off again. Instead, I'm going to choose to go here. This spot blocks red from making a double connection to either of the two spots that I just showed you. It may not be a forced connection with my piece but it will create this line format that I'm about to show you. The line format is a traditional format in Hex that causes both players to pursue one line that basically benefits one of the two sides. The two players will continue going that way until one tries to break out, as Red is doing here. Naturally, my only real option here is to either go here or here. Now if I go here, then the CPU is able to block me here. I really have no choice but to go to this corner red-blue piece and hope that I can make a double connection. The CPU then decides to try to block me off on the left hand side. This is the one side where the CPU is not at a disadvantage right now. Again, I have two options. I can either go here, in which case the CPU would go here, creating a connection to the red-blue piece on the left hand side. Instead, I'm going to choose to go in between the two red pieces. Because Red did not make a double connection here, I'm able to go in between him and make his position significantly weaker. Red has a triangle, and whenever there's a triangle, that means that two spots are sharing a double connection, and therefore it's no longer a double connection. Note that if I go here, where my piece is highlighted, Red can go here, but I can go here, and vice versa. If I go here, Red goes here. I go here. Either way, I get out. Always watch out for these triangle positions, where you think you have multiple double connections, but your double connections are actually sharing a piece. This will prove to be a weakness for you when you go up against a strong opponent. Well, the CPU clearly realizes that he's at a loss here, and so instead we're continuing in yet another line. It's important to note that the closer you are to the edge, or to your opponent's edge rather, the weaker position you are. The more you're able to start a line towards the center, the more you'll be able to adapt and maneuver your way around any wrenches your opponent may throw at you. In this case, my opponent is leveraging the fact that he has a piece right down here in order to try to stop me. Fortunately, he doesn't have a double connection here, and so I can go in between and try to cut him out. Once again, we have a triangle here. And as I mentioned before, 
This means that no matter where I go, I'm able to get out. As you can see, Red is trying to box me in, but fortunately I have the upper hand. No matter what your line looks like, as long as your pieces are connected, it's still a line. Naturally, I'm going to go here. This is really the best spot for me. If I go a little further up, my opponent can go here and cut me off because he's got a double connection here. Instead, I'm going to go towards the end and hope that I'm able to create a line that my opponent cannot break out of. And that should be the case. As you can see through these lines and the fact that I've made really several lines at various points, don't be afraid to give up on a line you've already created. It might seem like you're giving up on a lot of really good progress, but actually whatever works and puts you in a better position is the best for you. Now again, my opponent's trying to break out. Note that if I go here where my cursor is highlighted, he can go here and box me out yet again. Normally I'd want to go in between this crack, but as you can see, I don't in this case. I don't want to go here either, because he can go ahead and get me over here. And this is what I mean by you're at a bit of a disadvantage the closer you are to the edge. Because normally I would go here to the right and kind of set it up so that I could go two down and create yet another line, but I don't have that kind of space. So note here that my opponent is trying to break out of the line but he made the fatal mistake of leaving a space in between his line. Whenever you see one of these spaces, it's usually pretty advantageous for you to try to take it. I expected Red to go here, because it looks like he's almost completely blocked me off. There's nowhere I can go here, and he's one step away from completely locking me off to the right-hand side. This may look pretty grim. It's actually an opportunity for me to get out. I'm going to go here, and this forces the CPU to choose. He had to choose between this and this. If he gave me this spot, that would be connecting me all the way around to the right hand side. So he lets me go here. I'm going to finish this off with a double connection, and now I've got a force connection meaning that no matter where my opponent went, I could either go there, and as you see, he blocked me over there, or I can go here, which is where I'm going to go now that he's gone to my left. The CPU knows it has nowhere it can go, so I'm just going to fill in some of these dots. And my line is complete. Now let's try that again. Once again, I'm going to go in the center, since this is the most advantageous starting position for me. Once again, the CPU is going to go adjacent to me. And I'm going to once again continue this diagonal. This is really the best starting play, no matter what you're doing if you're playing the CPU in hex. So once again, the CPU makes this move where it's trying to block me off on the right hand side. However, I do have some mobility here. I have more mobility on the bottom half of the board. As you can see, I can create a double connection to go directly below red. And if you're wondering why I keep using these directions that might not be what you expect, I try to view the board as left to right blue, top to bottom red. I find that this helps me kind of visualize where the game is going and my positioning. So I'm going to go below. As you can see, the CPU tried to block me off by going in between the two forced connections I could make. So naturally, I'm going to go in that space in between his connection. Once again, I'm going to go in the space in between his connection. He's going to create that classic line format, and I'm going to follow him up just enough so that he can't connect over to his red pieces. One more. And now I'm going to go here. CPU goes there. And I finish off my line by going two spaces above him. He 
So once again, the CPU does something that's not necessarily a threat to me, and it prevents really an opportunity for me to continue to solidify my position here. I'm gonna build out this line a little better. Once again, we go directly across, and the CPU really has no choice but to try to break out of this format before he gets to the end. This is a pretty solid line for me, because the CPU has no pieces that it can really connect to. But of course, he's going to try to play um, on the very last connection he can make. And so I'm going to go in between him, once again, cutting him off from his other pieces. And here I might have an opportunity to leverage some of my pieces. As I always say, follow up your opponent's attack. Notice that he went here, and if he went where my cursor is, he'd be blocking me off entirely from the left-hand side. So it's extremely important that I follow that up by playing here in order to solidify my connection on the left-hand side. Again, same thing with right. I'm gonna follow him up by playing here. He's gonna create a line. And so now that I'm kind of out of the clear, Instead of setting up my line by going here, as I ordinarily would, I'm actually going to go here. This is because I'm so close to the edge that I know I'm going to be able to make connections. If you look to my right, I'm only one move away from making a double connection. If you look to my lower left, um, I'm sorry, my lower right, again, one move away from a double connection. If I go here, I can set up the line without having to use that extra move. That's going to pr prove pretty advantageous for me, because ordinarily, if I'd taken that move to set up my position here, my opponent would be able to make a double connection, whether that's there or one down here, and cut me off completely. We continue down this line, but again, I have the advantage. I have pieces that connect to mine. I'm going to go here. I've got a double connection here. So what's interesting is that these few pieces that you see in this line here are actually not connected to my main line that connects to the left. Fortunately, I recognize that and I'm just one move away from solidifying that connection. Even though it's not a traditional line, they still weave around, and now I've effectively got a line that goes from left to right. As I mentioned before, I have pretty good mobility. You can see that because red just tried to block me, but I can go here, making a double connection. And red tries to block me again. Again, I've got a double connection. Now I just need to finish up these double connections, and I win. Thanks for watching guys, hope this video was helpful and looking forward to making more 51 Clubhouse Games videos in the future.